And Thursday, uh, February 25th, 2021, the Los Altos Public Arts Commission meeting looked like we have most of our attendees, most of our commissioners, or if not all. So um, let's do just a quick roll call. This is Nancy Ellickson. I'm here. Take a minute and just give your name and. Paula Rini. Always looking good, Monica's iPad, Monica Waldman. <laughs> Jenny Strack. Hillary King. David Herrine. I think we're I think we're good. And That's we have everybody. we have our um, uh, council liaison, Vice Mayor Anita Enander. So we are good to go. We're good to go. All right. Um, we do have a quorum and let's see if there are any comments from the community. Nancy, before we, we go there, can I, uh, can I be indulged for a couple of moments to make Always, a John. couple of introductions of some very important and special people? Okay. Um, and to uh, provide all of you with an announcement. Um, as you all know, I have been taking on some uh, other responsibilities within the organization. And so happily, you all are going to have a new staff liaison. So I want to introduce, uh, and he's turned his video off, uh, William Wells um, and Jamie Chu. They are from, um, uh, they are in our recreation and community services department. Um, they will be helping out, the helping you all out um, in the, the next few months. Uh, William will be your, I believe we're calling him your interim staff liaison. And the reason we're doing that is because the city will be recruiting for another um, individual in the recreation department. And so once that person is on board, um, there's going to be some more shifting and uh, moving around of folks. Um, William is also the staff liaison for the Youth Commission, so he's got a, a couple of commissions now. Um, but Jamie and William are both fantastic. Um, they have have a lot of experience working with commissions. Um, I mentioned William. Jamie is also the liaison to the Library Commission, um, and so they have a lot of experience helping you all um, be successful in your roles as uh, commissioners. Um, and so I am excited for, for you all to have um, some fresh ideas and some fresh uh, minds to come in and to help you all out. New minds that we can work, right? <laughs> um, exactly. So it's nice to have uh, Karen Zucker and Matt McBurney here tonight because they are both former commissioners and um, have been part of John's journey over the last, um, I think we said over 10 years. Wow. It's more than John, you're a baby. It's more than 11 years. More I've than 11 years. For the commission, yeah. So um, I think everyone, a virtual. Yes, thank you. And it, it truly has been a pleasure working with all of you. Um, of course, I will still be around. Um, and so um, you'll see me from time to time and um, I I'm, will be providing William and, and Jamie as much help as I can, um, and certainly as they transition over and whatnot. Great. Well, John, thank you. Are you going to stay tonight? Oh, I, I will stay through tonight. Yes, I will still be. Okay. Here. Okay. Good deal. Okay. Anything, anything else? Nope. That was it. Okay. We'll miss you. We will miss you. Yeah. Um, and we'll miss your great notes. So there's a, there's a big pair of shoes that you guys need to fill. So thank you again. And thank you both for being willing to uh, take on the Arts Commission. So moving to our first item, which is the Youth Commission Public Art Project. Do we have a representative from the Youth Commission here? Yes, we do. Uh, Jessica is, there she is. There we go. Do you want to unmute Jessica? Hello. Can everyone hear me? Yes. 
Okay. Yes. So I guess before I begin, um, does anyone have any questions for me? You don't know what you're going to say yet. <laughs> oh, I will. I'll basically just reiterate what I said at the last meeting, um, which is basically um, we are inviting two art commissioners to help judge um, it with our art competition. And so our art competition has already opened. It opened last Monday and we're giving um, students a month to submit their artwork and the artwork deadline submission is, I believe the second week of March. And so we will be judging um, the third or fourth week of March. Okay. How do we as commissioners sign up? Is there a process you'd like us to follow? Is, was your question about how to judge or how yes, to sign up if, to judge? Yes, if we wanted to assist with the judging. Oh yeah. Monica, so, oh sorry, Jessica, I think the question is, does the commission want to assign two people oh, okay, okay. to serve as judges? I think that's the ask. I'm sorry, happy sorry to, to cut you off, Jessica. I'm happy to volunteer, Jessica. Okay, awesome. I, I can volunteer as well. Great. Okay, thank you. Done. Um, John, do you want to share our emails with Jessica so that we can make sure that if there are meetings we need to attend virtually that we can be there? Yes, we'll, we'll make sure that you, you all get connected. Great. Perfect. Thank you. thank you. And thank you, Jessica, for taking the time to come tonight. Mm -hmm. Of course. Okay. Any other conversation on this? Is there anything you'd like to add, Jessica? Um, I think that is it for now. I guess okay. once we get, once I'm, I get connected with you guys, I'll send over further information on like how we'll be judging these artworks. So it's less confusing okay. for you guys. Well, how many are you expecting? Um, how many do you have so far? I haven't checked yet, but I have, we have been receiving a few emails, uh, just questions from students. And so I'm hoping for at least um, a few artwork that we can judge. And these are going to be hung in the uh, new community center in the youth room, correct? Yes. And how are they going to be hung? Have you sorted that out or? Uh, we haven't decided on how they're going to be hung yet. Okay. Are you requiring them to be framed out of curiosity? Um, no, they can just submit their physical artwork and then the winners, we will frame them. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. and, and one last question on that matter, only because um, Hillary and Paul and I are on a subcommittee for the Community Center for Art and we're trying to figure out how to hang, frame, hang works. Um, are you, do you have budget to pay for frames or how is that working? Yes. It's like Will is nodding that maybe you have budget. I see Will nodding down there, so. Yeah, we applied for a grant, the SVCE grant, I believe, and we have a budget for it, so yeah. Good. And, and SVE is? The Silicon Valley Clean Energy Grant. Oh, that's right, that's right. Is there a, is there a, um, kind of a focused topic for the artwork that you're, you're, that people are submitting? Yes, so the topic is um, about the environment. So you can draw about what the environment means to you. Okay, okay, good deal. Well, I'll look forward to uh, judging. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you for volunteering. Thank you for the invitation. Thank All right. you for including us. Moving to, um, Item number two, we have uh, Maddie McBurney here and um, Karen Zucker. Maddie, Karen, you want to take it away? Hello. Um, well, it, I think it's on the agenda, right? Yeah. But you guys know that Arts Los Altos is, would like to donate a pendant light that's, um, made by Heidi Kozo, which is one of the artists that is in the plaza at the Assistance League, that big sculpture. And they make these beautiful pendant lights. And we would like to donate one to you guys in hope that it could hang in the gazebo in Lincoln Park. It would look fantastic there. 
Um, I think you can see, um, John, did you include the photos? Yes. Of I, um, it really, it's really pretty fantastic. Um, so, you know, we're just here to see um, if you guys like it and, and if you would accept it and um, if you have any questions. <clears throat> <laughs> Commissioners? Can I go first? Yes. So, I mean, art is always subjective, and I know, Karen, you think it's fantastic, the work that's over by the Assistance League, I personally am not in love with, so I'd be hard-pressed to say yes to hang one in Lincoln Park. I don't think it goes with the gazebo in Lincoln Park. I don't think the artwork also goes with the Assistance League, but that's not up to me. I would say um, thank you for the donation in the, uh, sorry, I'm cooking dinner. Um, thank you for the donation, first of all. Um, it's really nice to have that dinner, you know, donated to the city, and it's great what y'all are doing. Um, I like the art that's there, and I think it would look cool in the gazebo, but um, I do wonder how the rest of the public would feel. Are people, are we going to get kind of a backlash of, oh my gosh, the gazebo? Um, what is our next steps, I guess, too, in terms of taking something that's donating? Um, do we need to decide if it's something that kind of aesthetically we want, or is that, what, what are our steps and what are the questions we need to ask? But the major thanks is what I also mainly want to communicate. Paula? Um, I, again, I echo what Hillary said. It's a really generous offer. I think the piece is interesting. Uh, my two concerns would be, um, over the years, we've always tried to spread out the work that we get from different artists. So we wanna make sure that we don't uh, necessarily focus too much on a single artist or group of artists. Um, and my other comment is, I'm not sure that the gazebo would be the, the best place for this particular piece. I think I'm not super comfortable with the commission accepting a piece with the condition of where it's placed. Um, I would be more comfortable if we did accept it, uh, being able to have a discussion down the road as to other locations where we could consider putting it. There might be a place at the community center, um, say the walkway that goes between the library and the community center. There might be some places to hang it in one of those pergola structures. Um, you know, there might be somewhere in Plaza that we could choose to put it. Um, plus we have to consider the cost to install it. And right now we're still, have not received any funds from the percent for art. So I, maybe those costs are super minimal. I don't really know. John, you could speak to that more than I could. Um, so just some, some things for us to think about. David? I haven't seen it. How can I see it? Okay. All right. Jenny, um, take, a, take your phone off mute. You're muted. Okay. There we go. Um, yeah, I, I think that um, it's so generous um, to get a donation. I love the idea of uh, this commission working with Arts Los Altos. Um, I love the piece myself. Um, I don't know what the size of the pendant would be or, you know, how it might look in the gazebo, but it I, was in the email that John sent to me. Okay. I, I didn't have a chance to uh, take a look at that. So I'm, I'm not aware of how it would look, but I'm sure it would look nice someplace. And I would hate to set a precedent of ever not accepting um, an art donation that is generously uh, given to us. Could we could we try it in the gazebo? I, I actually, um, Hillary, um, I actually am not not really in favor of this. Um, it sets kind of a precedent for the Arts Commission, and I can see down the road with um, having pieces donated and having the donor tell us where the piece goes. And so I, you know, I'm, I would say I'm not, not in favor of it. You're not in favor of the piece or you're not in favor of both. Of your... Both. 
Oh. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of the artist. I'm sorry to say. Um, I, I shared that with my friends at the Assistance League when they called me and said, oh, you have to come down and see it. It's interesting, but having two pieces by the same artist, um, not so much, in my opinion. But um, I'm only one vote. John, I have not seen it. And could you email it to me? I have not received an email uh, about this. Period. Monica, were you about to say something? I saw no. you. No. Okay. Well, so can we um, screen? Can we screen share to look at it right now? Okay. Thank you, John. I think my issue with it is it just seems really modern for the pergola and big. It's 16 inches. Um, so it would fit. I mean, it would, it would look good in the pergola. But I mean, if you guys accept it, it could be anywhere. It could be put anywhere. That was just our idea. If we don't accept it, what happens to it? Did you already buy it? Um, well, we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't answer the question. We'll find a place for it. I like it. I think that we have to do some tests or something to decide if it really should go in the spot. So, Arts Las Altos, um, Maddie and Karen, if, um, if we need a little more time to think about it, could you maybe come back uh, next month and we can talk about it again? And that would give everybody a little bit of time to um, go to the pergola and also look at other places. Yes. Okay, let's just... Fine. Does everyone agree to that? If you, let's do a quick vote. We'll um, move this topic to a future meeting. I just wanted to remind you guys that we had talked about the um, night light art walk that would go from the assistance lead to the park and then go to the Edith Park, which is part of the Los Altos Hills. Um, Arts Committee, which Karen and I went to and talked to them about placing a, it doesn't have to be high because of it, something that's not static, just not something that's lit up, but something that actually moves. And they were super, super excited about putting something at that park too. So hopefully we'll get that walk going. And we just thought Lincoln Park would be kind of cool. A lot of kids hang out at the gazebo and would probably make it a little bit safer. Um, atmosphere there and not too crazy with the reflections um, on the ceiling and there's no walls so it would just be up on right. the I anyway, have a question. I Is the gazebo lit? Is it electrified already? It's, it's outlined with some little tiny lights. But aren't those like Christmas kind of lights? Yeah. 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 Sort of. I don't know. Okay so there would have to be an electrical installation possibly put in. John do you know? Well, not necessarily. I mean, um, I was I was trying to look. It looks like the light inside, uh, and I was going to ask if um, the representatives from Arts Los Altos know um, what the wattage or the power is. It looks like it's an LED light, um, which is probably you know looking at the 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 lights, the string lights that are uh, that were in the pictures the power for those would be sufficient for an LED light. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, right. It, has a, it has a plug at the gazebo and a cord for the lamp too. Would you all be open if we came up with our own place for it? Sure. Okay. As long as it's in with walking distance from the other sculpture. Cannot, cannot <laughs> guarantee that, Maddie. <laughs> Sorry. 
Maybe uh, South Los Altos. Let me ask also a question is um, because Arch Los Altos is working on putting um, art onto private land as well. Is there somewhere like does Mary Proc now own a, a, a building downtown you could put it on or is there a spot? Oh, that? we will find a spot. If you guys don't want the donation, we'll find a spot. Oh, yeah. Don't you worry. <laughs> we just thought it'd be nice there. <clears throat> okay. Well, it's, it's good to know and we appreciate your coming. And Nancy, is everyone can I, can I add um, something? So um, Hillary had asked the question sort of what would, you know, if, if the commission wants to accept the donation, what are the next steps? Um, acceptance of donations of artwork uh, per the donation policy um, have to be approved by the city council. And so right. the commission would be choosing to whether or not to recommend acceptance of the, the donation to the city council that would it, you know if if the commission decides you want to to do so and you know you found a location that you think would be sufficient you would recommend that to the city council for the city council to approve okay and by the way the donation um uh guidelines hillary i'm happy to send those to you if you haven't discovered them online um aren't they are they online john Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, everyone comfortable with? Do we want to talk about this next month and in the meantime do field trips? Sure. That, that sounds fine to me. I think we should have a, a homework, <laughs> an item. Otherwise, it's just going to float. So. Yeah. And yeah. I, I believe. I, I believe the. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the Arts Los Altos representatives have offered to, if anyone wants to go see it in person, is that correct or am I, was I misrating one of the? Yeah, the we have it. <clears throat> we have it. Do you want to see it? Is it so, currently hanging somewhere else? No. So okay. if you want to safely and socially distance um, review it, there may be an opportunity to do so as well. Well, this is so generous of you guys. Thank you very much. And um, does anyone want to make a motion that we move this as an agenda item to our next meeting? I'll make a motion that we revisit it after thinking about it and looking at that site versus other sites and come back and make a decision at, the, at our next meeting. Okay. I second it. Thank you. All in favor, raise your hand and say aye. Aye. For recording and visual. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Maddie and Karen. All, All right. right. Thanks, Thanks you guys. guys. Bye. Have a great meeting. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Moving on <clears throat> to our next agenda item, Community Center Art. And... Um, would the community center committee like to present? Sure, I'm, um, we are going forward. <laughs> um, we got an email today from Linda Gass and the committee subcommittee should be meeting, will be meeting with she and Morgan uh, week after next to review the preliminary designs, which is really exciting. She's Very been doing a whole bunch of research. Um, and that way, that will give them time to, to get our input, do any kind of tweaking or whatever before they present to the whole commission at the March meeting. Um, what else, Monica, Hillary, you wanna jump in on any other aspects of? We have the exciting uh, how to hang things discussion coming yeah. up with Donna on the first. What, which the, I what is that? Um, we're discussing how we're going to hang items such as when we have community you know, calls for art. Will we require items be framed prior to us hanging them and what kind of hanging system to use and whose budget that comes out of because we have like no budget. And this could affect and this could affect um Current, the current stuff that's planned to be hung as well as set a process for hanging things in um, 
in the community center. Is that right? It's it's unclear to me if there's actually a budget for things like poster art and whatever else people would normally put in a community center. So we need to get Donna's or someone from the um, Park and Rec Department to get their uh, background on that. You know, like the system that's in the current council chambers that we've hung the paintings from. Yeah, we're, lo we're looking at options, so, you know, something like that, as well as other types. Um, and we have a meeting set up with Donna next week. So it would kind of be interesting to see what the youth show is considering for hanging so that it would be nice if it was consistent throughout the whole community center. Um, if we pick a system of hanging so that it is the same from room to room or space to space. And I'm going to assume whatever the Youth Commission is buying there for displaying uh, works from this contest, they're just going to leave it there for other purposes as well. If we end up taking the Arts Los Altos donation, is that something that you could see as a possibility of um, my problem with the pergola is it's just small and it's going to be in there right at the top inside. Is Most of the light's going to hit the roof of, of the pergola, I think. Exactly. Is there something at community center that would work? Well, there might be. That's what I was thinking. I, I, I may be dreaming, but isn't there something that they've built over the walkway from the library? A freight like, no, am I just making this up? <laughs> You know, John's you, making a face. Jamie, I know. Jamie, Jamie would be, would know best. <laughs> um, so, in the library connector from the library to the community center, um, there are trellises that um, are, that there are there, um, and it was planned that there would be greenery, uh, so that there would be shade. Um, it would kind of create that inviting walkway from San right. Antonio to the community. So, so there is. There are structures that are there, but I don't know. Um, yeah, go for it, John. And there may not be power. Yes. Right. Yeah, I was thinking that too. But there are. Well, is there an yeah. alcove or something inside where there, you know, where we could easily get power? I hesitate to put. If we do opt to accept it, I hesitate to put it outside after our experience with the doors. Well, but if you put it in a, like hanging from a trellis, it's a, it's an outdoor light. I mean, okay. I, okay. Get, I don't know that vandalized, I guess anything could get vandalized, but I think, I think there's going to be a lot more foot traffic around the library, the community center. You know, when we're, when COVID is gone, kids are there at the library studying till nine o'clock. There's, I think you're going to get more foot traffic in that section of town than you are at the gazebo in Lincoln Park. I, I, I think if we can find a place there, that's not a bad idea because it, um, as long as you think it's okay outside and wouldn't get hit with sprinklers and stuff. Ah, Jenny. Can I speak for a sec? Yep. Um, I went to the opening, the unveiling of the, the other piece, and those artists have work hanging outside all over the world. These pieces right. are meant to be outside. Right. So that's not going to be an issue at all. Madam so, Chair, by the way. Yeah. Madam Chair, I don't want to, this is Anita Enander, I don't want to throw a wet blanket on this, but you've technically postponed an item to a future agenda item and a future meeting. And so I'm not sure that a continuing discussion, especially I, if the if presenters are no longer online, which I don't know if they are or not. Um, you, you beat me to it, Vice Mayor. I was going to suggest. I was waiting for you. I was suggest like, okay, that we uh, first here. <laughs> since since we we sent the uh, the representatives from Arts Los Altos home, that maybe we should uh, pick sorry, this back I, up next week or next meeting. I took us down. Sorry, I took us down a path thinking community center. Sorry about I that. I feel like we got busted. <laughs> we got busted. Uh, community center um, committee. Do you want to continue on? Is there any? I think that's it for right okay. now. Hillary, had, uh, Elizabeth joined the call from the History Museum. Hi, Elizabeth. Um, 
Elizabeth, uh, have you uh, gotten in touch with anyone from the History Museum at all? I mean, I've talked to Diane, Diane, I've kind of emailed, but again, we're kind of waiting to figure out our hanging system before we kind of narrow down exhibit. Okay. Um, because if we're, if we're going to stuff that's got to be framed, that's a different, that could be a different category. So, um, but I think we'll be able to come up with some ideas. I was almost, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, we talked about maybe doing a here and the, here and now or then and now photo thing, but we'll see. I think we'll be able to come up with something. And, and maybe if I can just add the, a little bit on timing, um, you know, we, the, the date for opening is keeps kind of moving back a little bit. Um, we're looking at um, May being mostly done, um, June being done, um, and so opening sometime after that. So um, I don't want the rest of the commission thinking we've only got, you know, three weeks before things are opening back up on the community center. Are we thinking that, um, committee, are we thinking that we work with uh, Linda Gass and um, Morgan Bricka will be done? Um, have, have we given them a realistic timeline? Oh, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think once uh, they're planning on presenting I guess a pretty much final design at our March meeting and then some whenever is feasible and based on Morgan's schedule to paint it and, and the work schedule to have access. That seems like there'd be enough time, don't you think, John, from what they've told us? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. John, do, do you know, are, is the general public going to be allowed to go in once they open, if it's, if it's well, opening that's, in June or July? That's a big we will see. Um, okay. A lot of it has to depend on the state and the county, um, the regulations and rules that they come up with. Um, as you may have seen, they're relaxing some of the restrictions on outdoor events. They have not relaxed anything on indoor activities. And so it's a big we'll see. Okay. Any other questions, comments, needs more info? No, we're just chugging along. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, if there are no other comments, let's move to community art project. When we all left last month's meetings, meeting, we uh, were going to brainstorm ideas for um, some additional community art projects. Does anyone want to kick the conversation off? Should I kick it off with the uh, email I sent to John to forward to everybody? Maybe maybe a, a simple chalk uh, project with positive messages through downtown or a section of uh, the city. Cost would be very low. I had the same thought actually when I saw that article about the uh, Menlo Park. That would be a great um, project to bring here. <clears throat> it would be a lot of fun too and in down I'm wondering if we could do it both in downtown and maybe in, is there enough of a business district in South Los Altos that we could do it there as well? Wow. So there's the Loyola Corners business district. Um, I don't know if it has the foot traffic. That, or sidewalks. Uh, what's that? Or sidewalks. It, it has, it has sidewalks. Are yeah, there? it has sidewalks yeah. throughout it. Um, it's, uh, it's not as much of a, as, if Not, you could do something in front of Tom's, that's going to get the most foot traffic. Or, or yeah, but the, you know, a practical question. I did actually Google, and I think it's like illegal to you know do sidewalk chalk. Um, so we'd have to kind of get down to the practicalities of would it be street or would it be on the on the sidewalk and all that. Um, but it is kind of a nice thing to come out of COVID for kids who have done chalk, chalk you know, sidewalk art or something. Um, it's kind of a nice um, segue, actually, or transition out of this time. And, and I do know on my walks back in the spring and summer, I saw a lot of chart mm -hmm. chalk um, messages, yeah. you know, thanking first responders and hang in there sort of thing with, you know, positive messages with artwork. I wonder if, um, I know we all go to the Palo Alto Art and Wine event and they always have on one of the side streets, yes. some incredible chalk artists. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if we could get maybe one really 
top end to volunteer, a chalk artist to volunteer their time to do something maybe in a key place to kind of get everybody's creative juices flowing. What do you think? I think we should pay them because they're an artist and we should pay for their work. Um, so if there's any budget, we should at least try to. I think I, I saw one on Instagram that's in San Francisco, but I think we, I think that's actually a good idea to reach out to somewhere and find, but I think if we have any kind of budget, we should try to pay them. I mean, it's nice if they'll do it for free, but um, you know, it's there, it's, it is their job. So we should acknowledge that. Okay. Um, other, that's idea number one. Other ideas? Jenny had something to say, then I'll follow oh, up with Jenny. Well, I have, I have two things. Um, about the chalk idea, would it be possible for the city to allow us to um, block off a city block, you know, on a side street downtown, like we do with the pop-up? Um, um, what do you call them? The park. Or whatever right. That we've had in the summer um, that we haven't been able to have because of COVID. But the city was quite generous with allowing us to, with, with blocking that area off. And so maybe they would be willing to block off an area to do the chalk art. Um, because I think that could be really fun. Of course, the number of people would have to be limited. Everything would have to go according to whatever the COVID guidelines are. Mm -hmm. um, then on a, on a totally different idea, um, we were talking a long time ago about um, the night of ideas and, and doing a um, paint by number mural that the community would, that we would have an artist, and we, we had an artist who was really <clears throat> willing to do the canvas for us, and then having the community fill it in. And I don't know if that could be a possibility at this point, um, given the COVID guidelines, but if there were some way to do it, that could be a really fun thing too, um, where kids and, and adults could sign up for times to work on it. And then maybe that could be hung somehow um, at, the, at the community center or at the library or someplace that's um, common for everyone. That's I, a great idea. I'm glad you remembered that. I think that's why I, I and that goes into something I was thinking about. We also talked last year to the farmer's market and having an artist in residence there. And that, that stayed open and was pretty safe. So maybe we try to bring the paint by numbers. That's a great idea. Market yeah. And we can develop those two together. And we could have sign up sheets. So people say you come back at 515 and you can paint then or something. So you don't have a line, you don't have a crowd. So. Well, I think the, I, I think the other thing um, that we, we kind of want to remember is we don't have a lot of budget. Right. We don't have any budget. Right. And, um, so I, um, gosh, these are, these are great, I, great ideas. Monica, anything, yes. Paula? I had more. <laughs> oh, you do? Great. <laughs> but, um, I want to make sure everybody else has the floor, so I'll go later. <laughs> oh, you know, one other, one other thing that I was thinking of with the, with the chalk art, maybe what we could do um, in the interest of social distancing is maybe we yeah. have stations. Maybe it's... Um, on corners, different corners or different stations or something like that, where we could have a group of people that maybe they get a corner. Well, didn't they control it in Menlo Park by this woman drew like the heart to start? And then that was my understanding from looking at it quickly. And the next one she drew was far enough away so that you were, weren't ever more than six feet or whatever from the next person. And then you add it to what she had done. Oh, that's a good way to do it. Heart. I think like you put your own initials or whatever. So we could do something like that where, you know, I don't know, maybe it's a star and they're, they're placed far enough apart so that when people are working on them, they're socially distanced. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. That's a great yeah. idea. Did they have somebody that um, uh, kind of managed the process? I think it was an artist mm -hmm. slash resident and a restaurant tour because it was in front of a specific restaurant. Um, mm -hmm. It just fe it felt really organic, which was kind of cool, you know, just a sort of really simple thing that evolved, um, not overly managed. But I, I don't know. I'm not sure. Hillary, do you want to take another go at it? Well, 
I, I guess it goes back to where are we doing virtual? Do we don't want to do anything virtual or do we? Because I've got someone who would do like a haiku workshop for free. Um, I might be able to do someone do a book binding workshop. Um, but one thing I kind of wondered is I'm personally kind of confused. We have a lot of different art groups in town. And I wonder if we need kind of a state of the art on the state of the art in Los Altos public forum or something at some point because now we may have an art walk to Edith Park, which is part of Los Altos Hills, I'm hearing. So I just, maybe that's something to put on the, the future agenda or, or something, but if there's a lot happening with different groups and it's not always clear what and why. Um, and I, I'd noticed, I'd been noodling around with this, I noticed that Walnut Creek actually has a public art program that they fund and they have someone who manages it. It might be interesting to have someone talk about what it's what that entails what does that look like versus kind of a volunteer two different or multiple groups you know doing things so um at some point it might be interesting and maybe that's another winter event as we head into warmer weather we want to get people out but as we go back into winter events at some point have and we can go back online have some sort of state of the art of, of the state of the art here because there's there's things happening and it's not always just clear what it is i think that's a great idea okay i've got that in my notes um monica i just had the chalk idea and i i did want to um mention with uh jenny's idea also um with some kind of paint by number at the farmer's market we could do panels per week mm, that's a good idea nice so idea. that way it's not that's like you idea. have a an eight foot long um item that needs to be painted and only three people painted if we if we do smaller sections over a period of weeks there's more chance that it gets filled in that's a great idea a couple of ideas that i came up with um one would be in the same vein with chalk but maybe we talked about a couple of years ago we talked about doing a wall where it was um my biggest joy is or before i die i want to whatever i don't think we should do the before i die one but maybe do something like that on um rolling chalkboards do we have rolling chalkboards i think the city probably does right john i would actually ask jamie and william jamie and william so i think if if we did <laughs> recreation would have them Okay, so that's that's one idea. Another idea would be to buy maybe a hundred um, small birdhouses. We had the birdhouse idea as well at one point. And I know that, um, I think it's Green Los Altos is doing something with trees, but we could hang hand-painted colored birdhouses um through if we had enough through both north and south uh business districts if we only had um a few through uh the north los altos business district that would be nice to tie north and south los altos together yeah are you talking about hanging it from the trees in the business district hanging from, the, from the trees yeah. yeah okay not high ones but well, you know low ones would yeah. and it would require um i think for us to do the hanging um it wouldn't require a lot of uh equipment or tools i think some fishing line and s hooks and we're good did john did john mention to uh jamie and william that part of the liaison job is to hang for us <laughs> i neglected to mention that one good <laughs> If we did something like that birdhouse um, project, which I think could be really fun, mm -hmm. A, do we have any funds at all to purchase the birdhouses? Or B, could we um, quote unquote sell them to people to paint? Or is that not cool? You know, like $25 or $20 or whatever. Maybe not even that much because they're actually pretty cheap to buy. I, I was looking at Michael's and um they're not hugely expensive right and maybe if we started with um see i get somebody barking in the background to uh, agree with me um <laughs> if we started them um maybe started with 25 or 50 of them 
right? Um, I have no idea what the price is. Well, I think you can buy them for around $5 retail, um, the simple ones. Okay. Do we have a hundred bucks, John? Do we have anything that we can, no. Because nope. what we could do, what we could do is oh, wow. we could say decorate it any way you want. And then, you know, we might get some that are way over the top with sequins and glitter and stuff. And right. we could get some that are just painted. Yeah. And so it and could the charm is in the quantity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I, oh, John needs to say something. Go ahead, John. Um, I, you know, I, I think it's a wonderful idea. I do want to remind the commission that uh, there is a group in town who is very soon going to be doing their own acquire a, a thing and a paint it and display it as well. You're right, but those bears are much more expensive. They are. And, and those will also be all over town. There yes. Yeah. I, I know. I just by by individual. I was just talking to Carol Dab yesterday. She called me about it. And I think that's a good point to bring up. Yeah. yeah. Um, there are going to be a lot of them. They bought hundreds of them. Really? So these bears are going to be all over town. So I don't know about having birdhouses competing mm. with. I think that's bears at you know at this particular point. Maybe that's the next. When year are they day. gonna? When are they gonna be out, Jenny? Do you know? They're starting in the summer. Well, um, we could do yeah. between now and because um, birdhouses are spring. Right. Well, I think they already have the bears. So um, the first bear, it, it's not decorated, but it's there for you to see. It's it, it's at the town crier building. There's mm -hmm. a bear with the forty niners. Um, scarf and hat on its head. I don't think we should compete with that. I think we should, that's a good, I think the birdhouse is a great idea, but I think we should, it's, I, I think don't think we should compete with that. Even if, I mean, even if we got it going in a month, that would be, A, it would be hard to do, and B, I think it would just, I, it, I don't know, I just don't want to compete with that. Let them have their idea. We've got. They want to come and talk again about bears um, to us and, and solicit our help in any way possible with bears. So that, that might be, you know, something for us to think about. I, I do yeah, agree that we, oh, sorry, go ahead, Monica. I, I do agree that, that we don't want to compete with them though. I think the birdhouses would be aimed more at kids completing them versus a bear. I don't think parents are good. I looked at the price of the bears and they're the small ones. They're hundreds, if not thousands. I, you know, we're an affluent community, but I don't think a lot of parents are going to spend three grand to buy a bear for their kid to well, is there something that would tie into the bears in a way it would be cute if you could do like a i don't know what's a bear just, that kids could a paint beehive. Be cute. yeah beehive yeah, like a honey pot or something that would be yeah. cute I, I think that it would be a good idea for us to um to put the birdhouses on hold i agree concentrate on on maybe another couple of projects and yeah. pick up the birdhouse idea again after the whole bear thing is over well that wouldn't that would mean it would be up again next spring because birdhouses are a spring thing and the um, birds are going to go on for a while because they're going to be displayed and then there's going to be a parade of them and then there's going to be an auction and then more display and then some permanent ones hopefully that's what they want to talk to us about you know? so do, keeping that in mind do we need to kind of tailor our projects to let them you know have their space and, and make sure our projects are like the farmer's market would not conflict with the bears. Um, but are what you're saying, are what, is what you're saying, Jenny, that we shouldn't do anything downtown until the bears are gone? No, 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 no. I just that's kind of what it sounds like. Painting things and putting yeah. small things um, in trees. There are going to be bears in a lot of win shop windows, mm -hmm. and there are going to be some bears in other places um, prominently displayed, they're hoping, all over downtown. So um, I just think maybe getting the community involved in something that's completely different mm -hmm. at this point in time might be a, a better option just in the near term. And, to, and I like the idea of, of birdhouses very much, but um, maybe putting that off until, as you said, it's a spring thing. I mean, we have birds, we have a lot of birdhouses in our backyard and the birds are there all, all year long. So, um, you know, there, there must be some fall birds. I don't know. Are but we okay doing, are we okay doing something 
in downtown sure. while mayors are out. Sure. And yeah. Hillary had a good comment about like either bees, a honey pot, a picnic basket, or something that we could do with chalk or something. With, it, with yeah, it would, it would be. It would be cute to tie into that. I think that would be adorable. If yeah. we could tie in, and the rotary would just be thrilled to death, yeah. I'm sure. If we could tie in um, the uh, either the farmer's market mural idea or the chalk on the ground idea to the bears, that would be really fun. Mm -hmm. Well, and to Hillary's point a few minutes ago about all these different factions creating art, it would be really nice to have a connection between mm. two groups yeah what we're producing or trying to produce and they very much want to have a connection with us can i ask for an agenda item for next meeting um because we're talking about these ideas that we're trying to do with no budget and i'm not sure when the budget is uh, happens and if we should just go to the city council and beg for you know a couple little scraps um, and then what needs to be done in order to do that that's a really good point Monica and that was something I was going to ask to be on our next budget or on our next um, that was Freudian on our next agenda um, we do need to talk about budget and I think what we do need to do is um, I don't want to sidetrack us now, but I think we need to come up with what we would plan to spend on. So perhaps we can add that to our um, next month's agenda. Okay. Um, any other ideas for um, public art programs? Kind of, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit shot in the foot here, Jenny, because um, the bear thing is going to go on forever. And no, it isn't. You know, it's going to go from uh, fall. No, it starts in the summer and the auction is in the fall. So then the bears will be, it's my understanding that the bears will then be um, put wherever they're put. They're well, hibernating. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, they're going to eat all the berries and they're going to go night night. Um, yeah. I think well, a few of them will be on permanent display. Um, downtown and they would like to come and talk to us about that so if we can put that as an agenda item next time um, because I think we're going to get a couple donations would be my guess of big beautiful bears that we will have to think about accepting and placing well yeah we I mean I do think summer physically in downtown is going to be very bear heavy so that may not be it doesn't the best mean time. Downtown. One could be in a park, you know, yeah. who knows? But well, I, I, yeah. It's really or hundreds, home. literally hundreds that they have purchased. Uh, it's a couple hundred, I think. Wow. Well, most of those are small, right, Jenny? Sizes. Yeah. And my understanding I was... Bears. My understanding is for the first, when they display them, they'll be throughout the town, mm -hmm. not just downtown. Right. Okay. They will be. So it's not going to be like we're being invaded by bears. <laughs> Have you ever been to one of the cities that's had the cows and the, yeah, so it's going to feel like that. Well, I, I think we should work with it. I mean, we can make our bears art Absolutely. connoisseurs and place them by the public art and, you yeah. know, posing by it. So we should work with it. But it may be that, you know, just we can't do we can still do things but like i think the farmers market art and residence is a great thing um the chalk we could probably do in april or may before the bears or when the bears are there and work with it but i think we should kind of work with the bears um and also do other things i mean we can we can come up with other other ideas as well that aren't necessarily you know physical objects in downtown you know or do we Hillary, do? you brought up a, a haiku artist um doing some kind of virtual haiku yeah he'd do it for free he'll do a free workshop i mean that would be awesome and then we could take what well, people um the haikus they create and we could uh you know hang a banner in the community center or something with it if you're interested i'll he'll he'll do it and you know we can limit it i can you know i can monitor the zoom you know i, I think it would be something very different mm -hmm. and, and 
I, I, think, I think it, it would be, be very great. interesting. We always talk about doing something other than just visual arts. And I think that's a great opportunity. Okay. Well, I, if, if that's something we're interested in, I can talk to him and you know, we could probably do it in March or April. You can do spring as a season, spring in Los Altos as the theme. Um, do we want to make it a contest or just have, you know, maybe just do a workshop and have a contest or? No, con I would say no contest. Okay. It's, it seems like it's, something. Something, it's a wonderful thing to do with all age levels too, mm -hmm. because it's a simple, kind of concept and, and even little children can do it. Yeah, we had over 2,000 entries at our, our contest at work, so it was a, it was a big hit. Um, and he was, he kind of gave us some advice on it, but he all, wanted to do a free workshop there and they couldn't do it. But, um, you know, we could limit it and then say, you know, to, you know, 50 participants, I don't know if we get that many, but then say, we could also have them online, get this, get it, put, put them on social and then, um, you could display them in the community center or city hall or wherever is open. So that's, and that's a relatively inexpensive thing to display. So what about, stop, you know, you guys just one, stop for just one second. I think we've lost, Oh no, Monica is back. Sorry. I'm still here. Continue, continue on. Sorry. I just was going to say you had success displaying in Linden tree for the artwork the pandemic artwork maybe i don't know how many other businesses you guys contacted would there be a different space like the open window at chitrella restaurant or maybe we could display them downtown somewhere like that okay i don't know just a thought that's a good thought so do we want me to do we want to maybe adopt that for a spring project I think it'd be fun. It's something different. Well, unless you uh, are associated with Filoli, then it wouldn't be something different. But I think for us, it would be something different. Yeah. Well, Nancy just seems a little skeptical. <laughs> <laughs> you know, painting the pandemic was um, so much fun, but we didn't get very many entries. Not. And um, and speaking of that, we need to talk at some point about what we want to do with Linden Tree. And I have to take, go take that those things. Yeah. Down. Well, I was going to say I'm happy to come and help you if you want to do it on a weekend. It's super so, easy to grab them down. I just have to get over there and do it. But I'm I'm worried that writing a haiku might be something that um, I know Filoli gets a ton of visitors, and so getting visitors and people to do that is one thing. I just am worried after the reception for painting the pandemic. Um, but that, you know, I, I think it's a great idea, offer. but I'm just worried. You can still offer and have it. And then if there's 12 people and it doesn't feel worth displaying or doing anything further, then you're done. But we've offered that. Yeah, that's a good point. And I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah. Or we, we could contact the schools to the English teachers and, you know, at the um, elementary and middle school, elementary level, there you know, would be the regular teachers, but see if we could get a tie in to get some interest, you know, with the students. I'm wondering, um, of course, I was in grammar school 100 years ago, but I'm wondering if um, they still study Japan in fourth, third, fourth, or fifth grade. I think it's or, fifth. Is it fifth? I think so. Um, that would be a, a possible tie-in. Mm -hmm. the, the best way to get participants is to make it a contest, but you, know, <laughs> you, can, you can say my son or child won the Los Altos haiku contest. Or to give prizes like we did with the scavenger hunt. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you want me to talk to, why don't I, I can, I mean, I think we can, I think like Paula said, it's worth offering, you know, we can, it's something we're doing for the community. If no one takes us up on it, that's, we can't help that, but we're offering a free creative, creative outlet and process for people that's still valuable. So I think we should offer it. Um, and I think that, I mean, I can ask either Linden Tree if they, if they would make a donation or a book or anything like that as a prize or... I don't know. I could talk to them maybe to see if they would do anything. I'll, I'll donate some um, tin pot, you know, $5 coupons or something. Okay. Yeah, that was a, that was hugely successful. Mm. The yeah. idea of the ice cream, it got the kids going on the scavenger hunt for sure. Mm. <laughs> um, but it's given the thumbs up. Well, I mean, I, I think that for the participation, you would at least hopefully get most members of the, um, 
Public Arts Commission, right? So there's at least a couple of us. <laughs> Ask your family. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but we all said that with uh, painting the pandemic too. And I, I, only put Monica in, participated. I made a painting. You did, Monica. So at this point, just to, to kind of recap where we are, we talked about some sort of chalk project. Um, paint by, uh, during farmer's market, a paint by number, a different panel each week, or an artist in resident, in residence, um, which again, there's budget issues yeah. there. Um, bird houses, um, before I die, um, or something similar, uh, chalk, um, chalkboard, and, um, and haiku. I don't have haiku down. Um, let's let's look at between maybe now and if you guys are good with it now in the end of the year. And are there ones that just jump out at you that we uh, would like to do? Um, how about if I read through the list and raise your hand if it's something that you're interested in? Um, John, you're still on the line. Do you? I can tally if uh, if that's okay. So, ha haiku instruction. <laughs> it's free. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, and that's free. Okay. So that's free. unanimous. Okay. Um, chalk art. Yeah. My my only worry is the chalk getting smeared. But yes. You can put fix on fixer on it. Okay. okay, so that looks like it's unanimous, right? Yeah. Um, paint by numbers, one panel per week at the um, uh, farmer's market. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'd like to have a presence at the farmer's market if we can, because that's yeah. such a <laughs> gathering spot. Plus it's um, so well attended. That. Okay, so was that, did everyone, Paula, did you have a question on that? Yeah, are we voting regardless of whether we can afford to do any of these? No, we're voting on just general concept. Okay, all right, then add me to the mural. Okay, so that's all. And we do have an artist, we did have an artist who is willing to um, do those canvases for us. The problem free. is free. Free? Free. free. Good. Um, artist in residence at Farmer's Market. Well, that's kind of tied, tied to the same thing. Okay, so I'll cross that one off my list then. Um, birdhouses. Of course, I'm going to vote for birdhouses just because <laughs> I like the idea of birdhouses. And so, okay, it goes down in flames, but that's okay. Um, no, I, I, I do love the birdhouses, but I, I agree with Jenny that um, with the bears coming. Yeah, you're right. It would be too much. Okay, um, a, something like what I want to do before I die kind of uh, chalkboards. No one for it. Okay, don't all jump at once. Okay, so those both go off the list for now. So the top three are haiku, which would be limited cost, chalk art, again, limited cost, paint by number, which we, sounds like from what Jenny said, it would be limited cost. I think so. I think we could figure that out. Paint, um, so be the cost of the paint and the, maybe the canvases. <laughs> Goes up and up. I mean, that could get well, kind of expensive. You know, we we but, might get some generous donors who would donate some of that for us. Okay, so of the three, haiku, chalk art, and uh, paint by number, do we want to rank which one? Uh, anyone have any ideas about which one uh, we would want to do coming up? Well, it sounds like Hillary can help us get uh, the haiku one pretty quickly in the next maybe two months. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's put that as the number one. Does yeah. everyone agree? And that's, we're still kind of, as we get into warmer weather, that's one that still can be done online, can be done on Zoom, so that works. And Artists. chalk would be better in the summer, I think, anyway, because it generally doesn't rain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think? Well, both the chalk and the mural would right. probably yeah, be better during the yeah. summer. Okay. Um, so we're talking about haiku, chalk, art, and paint by number. 
Um, does that seem like too much between now and the end of the year? I don't think so. No? I think more. We need I more. <laughs> what? <laughs> we need more? Okay. Do we want to set a bar of uh, doing one a month? That's too, no. much. That's too <laughs> much. Okay. All right. One every six weeks. Well, I think I think we have three. That's pretty good. So okay. we have yeah. we did those. That would be great. Okay. I think we want to stay, you know, we want to be present in the present in the community and be doing stuff for the community. So I think fall, you know, we'll need to maybe think of things later for the fall, but this this gets us through to the end of summer, maybe. You know, and I think chalk art we can also tie to the bears, which is fun too. So yeah, if we can oh, have absolutely. someone come in from the Rotary um, and talk to us maybe next month or the following That's, month, then yeah, we could they plan want, when. They want to do that. So can we get that on the agenda for next month? Yeah. But remember, Jenny, it's not an hour-long presentation. No, it's like five minutes. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Because they want to ask about how we can work with each other and how um, they might be able to enlist our help in order to have a couple of bears that maybe are, are permanently part of our collection. And they're donating, they're willing to donate them? Um, they will not be the ones who have the bears. Um, you know, buyers will buy the bears. There's going to be an auction. And then the buyers can either decide to keep them themselves or put them someplace. Mm. Perfect. That's good to know in advance because we need to think about that. <laughs> so we would not be in a position to have to buy any of these bears. A couple of them might be, and they might be magnificent. I mean, we have some pretty good artists around this area. Mm -hmm. um, well, and I have inside information that um, one of our very good local artists is painting one. <laughs> one whose name has been mentioned tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, as a matter of fact. Um, okay. Would that, just out of curiosity, would that also tie back to um, the the first conversation we had with Arts Los Altos about the bears, whoever, if someone buys one and wants to donate it, do they get to kind of dictate where it goes or where they go? I don't know the answer to that. I kind of, I kind of think as an arts commission, if somebody, and I have to go back through and read the donation policy again, but I kind of think we get to make the decision. That's what I recall from Isn't the arts it policy. city council. Yeah, you you get to make the recommendation to the city council. But on, on positioning too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, we do have some open places for sculpture. A couple of new ones that were poured way back in the day when First Street was redone with Safeway and there's never been anything there. So who knows, we may get some really fun bear to put there. Oh, and by the way, I saw the chicken statue is still there, John. Yeah, I think yeah. with with the uh, pandemic hitting, that put a kibosh on travel plans to come and get it. Well, good, good for us. It's um, a good shape, I looked at it too. Good. Are there any further comments? What do we want to do as far as next steps for a community art project? Um, Hillary, do you want to talk to the haiku guy? Mm -hmm. I will talk to the haiku guy. I think a workshop, if he, he can do a workshop over Zoom, that's really going to be best suited to adults. I mean, I don't think it's really, I mean, we could do kind of open it up to kids, but I think the workshop is probably going to be at an adult level. Okay. Um, let me think if I can find anybody who could do one for kids or if there's um, a way to reach it out to kids. Maybe we can, you know, mail, I don't know. We'll, we'll need to think about that. But, you know, it's also kind of nice to do something for the adults too. But, um, you know, I can talk to him. I can do kind of a write-up of it and send it maybe to the committee um, and, you know, pick a date and do it and, you know, advertise it and see. Okay. Um, talk on um, next steps. Can I just throw in um, for Paula and Hillary and myself, since we're supposed to meet with Donna on March 1st, we could uh, suggest to her that we take some of the haikus and, like I said, print them out and, and hang them up in the community center as well. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yep. Nice idea. I can, I can, well, and I, well, should I talk to Linden Tree about, or another a business about, about putting them up, or do we want to try to aim it for a community center or? I think both. We could do okay. both. Because if community center doesn't have until July, your haiku is gathering dust. 
Gathering dust. The haiku does. <laughs> we'll have to do a haiku about gathering dust. Yeah. Well, so Hillary, Hillary, you had a, a number of places that said yes to um, yeah. pandemics. So yeah. um, we definitely have other options that yeah, we're willing so. to work with us. Yeah. I would say, I would just remind you that even if the uh, community center is done in July, if the county says we still can't open it, it could be even longer. Good point. Okay. All right. So moving to talk art really quickly. What does anyone want to take um, project ownership of that? <laughs> Paula, well, it don't look so I, enthusiastic. No, I know. I'm, I'm debating. <laughs> no, I was I'll, just. I'll work with you, Paula. Okay. I'll do it with you. Okay. I was just thinking it would be fun to wait until we hear from Rotary next month and see okay. how we can tie it in to the bears. Like maybe they're giant bear paw prints in chalk that people add something to or, or something. That's, but, that's a great idea. A wonderful idea, yeah. Bear paws. Yeah. Paws. yeah. yeah. And yeah. those are easy yeah. to draw. <laughs> yeah. So would everyone feel comfortable then waiting until we hear from um, Rotary? before we figure the logistics as far as doing um, the next two projects. Um, I, I think we could, we could, we, okay, we could price out the chalk and things and you know, okay. do some steps. Let's be ready. I mean, let's be a little bit ready to, you know. To jump. Yeah. Vice Mayor. I don't normally want to participate in commission discussions because that's not a role for the uh, council liaison but I just want to pick up on something that, and I apologize, I don't remember which of the commissioners mentioned the idea of making sure that you include South Los Altos for this or mentioned Loyola Corners. And I'll probably get myself shot by our maintenance department for bringing this up, but the city now does own a piece of Loyola Corners, which has a pretty good sized parking lot in it. Oh. Good to know, thank you. Well, know. that's even, that's There's even stripes in it, you know, some stripes for parking spaces, but not all of it is that. And then John, you can report me at the appropriate time and Manny can shoot me. <laughs> well, we need to, to figure out too, are we doing it on the street or sidewalk or all that? So maybe Paul and I can email and discuss a little bit, but I think we could make a little, do some research before the next meeting. Okay, uh, um, I'm thinking somewhere is safe, you know, like, a sidewalk it seems safer but um whatever well, you guys come up with some place can be blocked off for a short period of time that would be nice sure. too. john do you know if the city has any plans to block things off for dining the way that it was done a couple months back um well so are you talking about the where we closed off the streets or are you talking about the uh the parklet programs oh when you closed off the streets um, I, there's no current, currently there's no plans to do so again, um, because we've transitioned to the, the parklet program, which is sort of what you see as you go downtown where there's the, the big wine barrels blocking off the, the parking spaces. And so as of now, there is no plan to, to block off the streets again. Okay. Only because I know a couple of other downtowns like Palo Alto, they've got both going on. So. Mm -hmm. That would make it safer for people to go out and do the chalk art and for people to walk around and look at it. But do the who owns the parklets? Do so the, the restaurants themselves or the city own them? The the restaurants. So if um, somebody wanted to put art on top of those barrels, um, either bears or birdhouses or whatever, um, they wouldn't Thank need you. the city to um, approve that. Um, I don't want to give a definitive answer on that because I know that the, so the, while the, the restaurants or the businesses or the, the property owners actually own the equipment, you know, they do have to get permission and permits from the city. And I don't know if there's rules and regulations about what, um, can be used to put them up. Can, can we find out? Because that was one of the questions that they had about the bears that they're going to be asking when they come. Okay. Okay. So um, let's wait and let's hear what the Rotary has to say next meeting. And um, we'll go from there. Is everyone in agreement? Yes. Yes. 
Okay. Do you invite the Rotary, Nancy? Is that how it works? Um, they would go, uh, Carol is very familiar with this. So she's come familiar. before, and she would yeah. contact John. Yeah, uh, so. No, she would contact Jamie or uh, William. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then we would, Jamie and William, John and I generally review the agenda together before it's sent out. Can you send us Jamie and William's, all of their contact information, please, John? Yes, I will. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Um, anything further to say on the community art projects? Good plans. Good ideas. Good. I'm glad everyone really brainstormed. Um, Walter Singer. Yes. David, take yourself off mute. Okay, I uh, will not go uh, to inspect the uh, sculpture directly until next week. I've been vaccinated now and I'm just kind of going uh, through the time period uh, before that. I did do something though. Uh, I was looking, uh, I think last year, for a photo of the current uh, install of the, uh, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, where it has been. And uh, I asked the History Museum and uh, couldn't uh, get any pictures from them, but I did finally find one, which is a real estate ad. And using the real estate ad, I was able to back out the size that it currently is. And I don't know if you can see that, but there's a table next to it. So I uh, used the uh, size of the table uh, to figure out that the, uh, the base itself is about 35 inches high. Um, there's something, there's something that's kind of puzzling here, and this is why I really want to look at the sculpture. I will do it this next week, I hope. Uh, there is like a sub base there, and I wonder if that's still around. Because um, when I saw the pictures uh, that Paula sent me, uh, Paula, uh, it looked like it was just sort of a hollow thing that maybe was glued. But there's another piece in there. So there's a little bit of engineering that has to be done, I think. Uh, and uh, maybe I, if I, after I look at it uh, this following week, I hope, uh, I'll be able to give you a recommendation about that. Um, and there is money. So, Let's just suppose we all are all in agreement about what to do. Uh, who's got the, the, the ball to order it, to install it? John, do you have any yeah. idea? Yeah, so, um, you know, I, if, if I think the, the idea was, Paul and, and David, you were going to recommend the base. And then, so once yeah. the, we've agreed on the base, we can get it ordered. Um, you know, staff can help with that. Uh, or, well, staff can do that. Let me rephrase that. Um, and then, you know, we can work on how we install it from there. And I, I'm assuming it would be something that then gets bolted into the concrete. That's what I want to find out. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Next because, week. yeah. So, and, and depending on the base, if it's just a matter, you know, how thick the concrete has to be, you know, we have our maintenance crews can pour concrete pads. And so we can go out, put the pad down and then uh, install the base. Yeah. All right. Well, so it, I think the, the question really is, is there another piece involved uh, in making this thing secure? And uh, I'll make a recommendation. Uh, uh, this probably the following week about that. Um, but yeah, uh, I wonder if another piece was saved, if the piece that I see in the photo there was saved. And maybe I'll see that when I go uh, look at it. I don't think anybody here has actually seen it, right? No, yeah. those, those I, I've seen it in the past. Polly, you've seen it in the past, right? Well, I've seen it when it was in the plaza, but the photograph I have was taken by Gary Hedden and sent to me. Yeah. And it's like on its side on one of those plastic carts. Right, I don't know if you can see it here, but there is another piece involved. Mm -hmm. Sorry, can you see it? Sean, does, yeah, does anyone can. from maintenance who took it down, do they remember how <laughs> the sculpture was bolted to the, the base? If I, 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 I can ask. Um, if I remember correctly, 
that was it was not i don't know if it was bolted i think it was poured into the con the you know the concrete was poured and then it was set into it um and so i think david may be correct in that there may be pieces coming down from the bus that then secured it to the the concrete pedestal but i i could not speak definitively about that okay we, we want to be sure that whatever we do is durable and I think that's the main thing. I, I went over to the Chamber of Commerce uh, a couple days ago and looked. Uh, I guess somebody's already uh, investigated and maybe made a tentative idea of where it should go there. Yeah, so I I, I, I talked some time ago with the, uh, the director and we presented it to the commission and kind of came up with the general location. Ah. Right. Okay. So somebody over there, a woman walked out and said, you know, what are you doing looking at uh, things? And I uh, think, by the way, thanks for the little badge that we wear. I like that. Uh, the, the, uh, yeah. It's nice to have that. Really um, yeah. Kind of around the side there. Um, it it looked like a nice place uh, to, to put it down. I guess the problem with the front by the parking lot is that uh, vehicles can get into right next to the, uh, the building there. Is that right? Yeah, that was my understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fine. So on the side there, I think it'd be great. And uh, it could be a pretty heavy base so that it would be hard for somebody to, you know, pick it up and walk off with it or, or truck mm -hmm. it, even truck. Uh, I think that would be fine. Okay. Um, but yeah. We I, just still need to identify. What? I was just going to say, we still need to identify. My hear. connection, I guess, is bad. We still need to identify a manufacturer for the base, though. Well, you have located, you, you sent me an email. Uh, is, is there anything wrong with the, the one that you found? I think she froze. Oh. Sorry, my connection's really bad. So, um, I, do, so I haven't ask, found a base ask, yet. Sorry, I'm, I'm having trouble with my email. I'm having me like that. Just one observation. Uh, and it, we'll get to, I guess the next thing uh, that I wanted to talk about was the, uh, I did a survey of uh, all of the uh, sculptures in town um, and uh, to see how they were holding up. Um, looking at them, um, I'd say virtually all the bases are just simple cement. They are not, there's nothing, no facing or anything. It's just cement. And they, I think they look pretty good. I mean, that's, that's been the precedent uh, that we've had in the town. Uh, as long as it's bubble free uh, and corners are uh, kind of rounded off or are, are cut off, uh, chamfered is the right word. Um, it could just be that simple. John, do we have, does the city have somebody that um, has done some of the other pieces? Well, so, so there's, I want to make a distinction. So our crews have done the pads. Those are the ones that are, you know, maybe they end up being maybe six inches deep um, mm -hmm. and are on the ground. Um, our crews don't have the ability to do the a pedestal, you know, so something uh, taller. Um, some of the some of you may remember we had the piece that we put in uh, Lincoln Park some years ago that had a taller pedestal base that we had to hire an outside contractor to come in and and pour that. Uh, okay. Um, a lot of them have been done with simple um, uh, paper forms, cardboard forms. Uh, if you look at Seal Head right uh, in front of the uh, library, you could get an example of that. But, uh, it, that's been a common thing that somebody's done. Yeah. Well, and that one, that one's, that one predates my time. Um, so I don't know how that one was done. Um, yeah. I, I only know the, the recent ones um, that we've done since I've been here. Wasn't part of uh, the issue that um, the original base had a list of the donors or had some information on it? So ah, that's the discussion other of, of the informational plaque that needed to go on the base. And I've got the town historian 
um, willing to write that as soon as we tell her what we need and how many words we need. Okay. And um, so that's done. Um, thankfully, we're not hold, held accountable because this is when Maddie and Karen both were, um, I think, uh, chairs of um, the Arts Commission. So. Yeah, I, I have to kind of echo what Nancy's saying. This this whole mess is kind of Maddie's doing. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So we could donate it back. We could do an exchange and donate um, the the bust back to Arts Los Altos. And um, I'm joking. Um, okay. So, John, what? How do you think the best way to proceed is? Do we want to go back to the city's contractor and get a quote on it and then um, understand that we probably want to have either two or four plaques. Wow. Well, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't we want to have the donor, it used to have the donors on one plaque and some history on the other? Is that too much, David? Um, no, I think that would work. Um, okay. uh, who's our plaque maker? So, um, John. maybe, maybe, um, we can step back in, um, a, a little bit. Um, and, uh, Paula, you can maybe correct. I thought we were looking at getting a, a pre pre manufactured pedestal, um, that hopefully was going to cost a nominal amount. Is that, was that what you were looking at or? I, were... Yes, I had looked at something like that, but then we kind of slowed down because we wanted to look at the base of it and how it would all go together. Um, and I, I'm sorry, I didn't get those notes out. I think it was around $4,000 maybe, the manufacturer that I made contact with in Southern California. But I also don't know if that if it was tall enough. So I have to go back and look at that. Forty-five inches. Yeah. We right. know the dimensions. I'll come up. What? Do, do we know the dimensions that we want at this point? Um, like, do we know the have the dimensions of the last um, base that it was on the last pedestal? Uh, okay, that's where I said I backed out forty-five inches as a height. Um, and we have kind of a, a, a Paula uh, got uh, dimensions for the size of the uh, bust itself. I'd like to wait, uh, uh, you know, uh, about a week uh, to uh, go in after I've had a chance to look at the thing and the, maybe that there's a sub base there. I would be able to give you a, a much better idea of how big it should be. I, I'm happy with the 45, by the way. I, I mean, that puts the uh, height of the uh, um, the head up about the way it was, which is about 77 inches. Yeah, yeah. And I was I was going to suggest that if if David is going to go and look at the bust um, in the next week, figuring out exactly how it's going to secure to a base will help. Right. Um, and, and the reason I I ask that is um, I if if. If we have to hire a contractor to pour a pedestal or to create a pedestal, we may not have enough funds for uh, plaques. Got it. Uh, okay. We need to well, uh, all the more reason to keep the pedestal as simple as possible. I think right. uh -huh. we put our money into the plaque. I, I, I really believe that would be a good idea. Uh, I've been looking at a, uh, a plaque on a base uh, down at, in Grant Park. Uh, there's, it's the one that has the uh, our, our or, this, I want to say hourglass, the uh, solar uh, clock on it. Mm. What do I want to say? Sundial. sundial. And, uh, that's about the, the kind of plaque I would think would work. Uh, so anyway, there is a plaque as an example on a concrete base, which has stood up very well uh, in Grant Park for years. So I, was that maybe a custom concrete base, John? Do you know? It was. I, I, I would imagine, but I don't. It I don't was. It was. Wouldn't that be cheaper to just get a custom concrete base than these prefabricated, like more formal looking bases? Out of, I think the one quote I got was marble or something. And that's 
I thought my recollection, this was a couple months ago, was that that was more money than we thought we needed to spend on the base, even though there is a budget specifically for this project, the money set aside. I'm just looking online to see if I can find the same vendor that you had, Paula, so we can get an idea. But your, your remembrance is that it was around $4,000. Yeah, and sorry, my internet connection was really bad through part of this discussion, so I didn't catch everything you guys were saying about the base. No, I just, I, I think Paula's right with the approximately 4,000, because we were making jokes if we could take the other 6,000 and put it into our budget a couple months yeah, back. Yeah, exactly, for the murals. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Are, um, now, John, are Paula and David part of a subcommittee? So once David looks no, at the I just the put head, it in with that. I, I mean, with all due respect to Paula, I'm sorry uh, that uh, I'm, Oh, I, I don't know. I just mean like that you're allowed to send her an email yeah. with the measurements with a recommendation for her to price it out. Y yes, you're yes. you're correct, Monica. So Paula and David were are been a, a are a part of a subcommittee to work together, and so they can talk as much as they like outside of these meetings as long as they're <laughs> not talking to the rest of you. Okay. So. Okay, so you're gonna just to recap really quickly, David. You're gonna go look at it next week, and then that is my plan. Do yeah. I need to continue to find either a contractor to make a cement base or some other uh, business to create that, or it was something said <laughs> that I missed in my bad connection? Who finds contractors? Is it? Well, so it, again, you know, if we're, if we're hiring somebody to come on site and pour a pedestal, that's going to be the budget. Um, it may be more than $10,000. If it's a matter of finding um, online a prefabricated or a precast pedestal um, that's cheaper, then, you know, that's fantastic. And I think somebody just needs to look up and see if they can find, or okay. if there's a, if there's a, a manufacturer nearby that would uh, cast on their site and then deliver it, you know, that may be cheaper as well. You know, the, the pedestal, you know, pouring the pedestal on site, you're, you're really, you're paying for the mobilization, the labor, you know, the materials are the, the least amount of the, the actual cost. I have a question though, John. Um, if we have somebody bring something in, like we buy a pedestal mm -hmm. and we um, have it shipped, there's, there's something to be said for having it poured in place just because you have rebar, you have mm -hmm. stuff that's going to stabilize it once you put what. Well, and I'm saying like Walter Singer on top of it. Mm -hmm. And my concern is that if we buy something and we have it shipped, we're not going to have any of the safety stuff in place that will, um, if that were ever to fall on somebody, an earthquake, a car runs into it, something like that, um, mm -hmm. we would, the, the city would be liable. And I think we don't really want to do that. And that's why I'm, kind of thinking that it might not be a bad idea to get a quote on um and and here's just kind of a wonky idea but let's get a quote on getting it poured where they put rebar in and they make sure that it's stable and steady and sturdy and then perhaps what we do is put a temporary sign by the sign manufacturer that paula worked with and then when we have a little more budget, we can go back and do a nice brass sign. So I think we, we, can, we can certainly uh, try to get some quotes. I don't think you're gonna like what you hear. I, I, I don't know whether we are or not, but I think that if, um, if that whole structure fell because it wasn't sturdily installed um you know with rebar and all mm -hmm. sure. i think that the city would not like to be sued for sure who knows what 
Mm -hmm. Paula, I, I have an idea when I think about driving on El Camino uh, Real through Colma, driving past the millions of yeah. um, cemeteries. Cemetery people, yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe one of them can do it. Yeah, I, I somebody else mentioned that. <laughs> Excuse me, I, I haven't um, gone down that route, but I can certainly do a little research on that too. Again. Always it's good information surprisingly to have, hard right? to find these kind of places near here because I try to find somewhere in the Bay Area, um, and it's it's not easy. So if anybody, you know, one yeah. one place in South City would be Silvestri. Okay. Um, remind me, and I will send you contact information to see if they will do something custom or if they could have something made and brought it down and bring it down. But again, I go back to what are we going to do to stabilize it? You can't just put it on bare ground and expect it to stay in place. Right. No, but we've put sculptures in for years, right? And they're heavy and either a pad is poured or they're bolted to it or whatever. Okay. okay. I mean, but these, this one's think. elevated. Yeah, I know, but I don't think it's that much bigger than anything else we've done in the past, maybe. Right, but I think what, what Paula is saying is we would take the pedestal, if it was cast somewhere else, and secure it to a concrete pad that is poured on site. Okay, I just put it on the dirt. Yeah, I think so. Okay. And I'm having one more thought, Paula, is there's a number of cities up and down the peninsula in East Bay that have public arts programs, maybe if you get a hold of some of the staff liaisons and ask them if they had anything forward like this, they may have recommendations. Okay. okay. Uh, Monica, with your, Monica, with your um, uh, knowledge of artists in the community, do you have anyone that you would um, refer her to? No, I mean, most of the people I know who, who do larger sculptures, they're actually doing the physical sculptures. They don't usually worry about the bolting down. Okay. Okay, David, I interrupted you. Nancy, Sorry. one other a question. Uh, you say that you've got a list of the people that should be on the uh, sculpture and uh, uh, the, the side, the base. You have it now? Because, I mean, I can, I can mock up um, the list, uh, you know, on paper. Uh, 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 size, so we can kind of get an idea of how big the plaques are, would be. Same with the one on the uh, that, that tells that identifies it. If you've got that uh, information, send it to me, and I'll I'll mock it up in my. Great. I don't, John. You do right. Uh, I think those plaques are at the history museum. Oh wait, there is a plaque now. Well, so it's it's the one that Nancy's talking about that had the list of uh, people who donated. Okay, for the that's at the history museum. I believe they have those plaques. All right, I'll measure it all then. David, if they do, and you um, just take a, a picture of them and send them to me, I'll type them all in for you, and I'll type the biography in because there would be plaques with his biography on them, on it, and um, the donors. And if you. Yeah, yeah. If you just okay. take a picture with your phone and send it to me, I'm happy to type it in. Cool. All right. Okay. Um, any other comments on the Walter Singer bust? We were kind of aiming for, was it, am I wrong? Was it around May time frame? Probably. I think we just need to get this guy done. <laughs> He's yeah. been hanging out for years. So I <laughs> need to do everything we can to finalize yeah. this project. If there's anything I can do to help, let me know. I, as I said, I'm happy to key everything in and we can get it all ready if you want to have your sign guy, if we want to do a less expensive route on the sign. Okay. So, okay. and then the, um, I did line up the city historian as far as um, uh, going through and rewriting. She wrote the article in the town fire recently and she'd be happy to go through and just tweak whatever we want. Okay. The bio. Well, and, I, and so last thing I'll add, I did just find that I do have pictures of the plaques Ooh. over on the side of it. How about so. sending them over to me, John? Yep. And mm -hmm. I will um, type them all in so they'll be nice and clear. And, mm -hmm. and if the plaques get mislaid. We can't use those same ones. 
I would recommend new plaques. They were kind of old and faded and hard to read okay. type. Do we need to use the same font as was on the previous plaques? Mm -mm. Whatever is clear and easy, easily read is kind of my rule of thumb as far as fonts go. No Comic Sans. No Comic Sans. <laughs> um, but if somebody especially really wants Comic Sans, we can, uh, we can discuss it. <laughs> if they donate the money for the, for the base, maybe. No. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Um, are there any other comments or anything on um, the Walter Singer bust before we move on? No. And Hillary, um, I, I was going to make a suggestion me. that okay. when um, when we do get Walter back uh, on dry land, that Ginny write an article about the about that. Oh, Ginny, you're on um, you're on mute. Absolutely, great idea. That would be great, and I think a really good reference piece was the one that um, I can't remember her, Robin Chapman wrote that was in the crier okay and robin would be a good person to if you wanted someone to collaborate with she would be a good person to collaborate with because she is the uh i think the city historian all right moving to um commission minutes did everyone have a chance to review the minutes from the january meeting and um are there any changes exceptions things that maybe got missed. And William and Jamie, John does good minutes, <laughs> FYI. Um, would someone like to make a, most, a motion to accept the minutes as written? I make a motion to accept the minutes, minutes as written. Second. For the January 28th meeting. I accept. Yeah, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, commissioners reports and comments. I just have two quick questions. Um, first one is, do we know that work is progressing on the, the guy from San Francisco who's doing the, the big piece for the community center with the light? Do we need to make any contact with him seeing as this is our last time with you, John? Um, yes, as far as I know, work is progressing, but we should ch definitely check in with them. Okay. And you will give uh, you will give the information to uh, William and Jamie and, and giving Paula. them everything. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Sorry. And my my other question is: Is the search on for our seventh commissioner? Yeah. So um, yes, um, we don't have any applications. So, but there's other commissions that don't have applications as well. And so we're gonna, if, if we will be recruiting very uh, heavily. So if you have people interested, have them keep an eye out. Only because the ads I've seen for commission openings did not include our They did not include it. Uh, we did not actually get a resignation until, uh, a formal resignation until I think two weeks ago. Okay. We're kind of in limbo. So if you know anybody who's interested, have them keep an eye out. Yeah. Okay. Um, potential future agenda items. Let's walk, I, I'll summarize kind of what we come up with tonight and um, jump in if I've missed anything. Um, David was planning, and I'll put words in your mouth here, to do a, um, a review of restoration of pieces and the status of uh, the current pieces. Yes. And it would be great to have that on the agenda next week. Um, if we can make it the first item, it'll give us a little bit of time to do that. And John, those are all on the G Drive. On G -Drive. Um, the other thing is uh, going forward, a working budget. And let's talk about strategies and budget strategies. Um, the next thing would be the bears and rotary. Next thing would be um, the donation of the artwork by Arts Los Altos. 
Uh, and then our standard Walter Singer bust update, um, community center art update, community art project. And I think Youth Commission were pretty much done with because they will, um, uh, they have their two volunteers that they wanted. Um, are there other topics uh, yes. you'd like to add? Monica? Uh, uh, Linda and Morgan are going to come by next meeting, I believe. Ah, great. It's going to be a very, very busy meeting. I'm wondering if, what we can push off to the next meeting. We, don't we also need to talk about community art projects? I had that on here. Oh, okay. I that. Um, we're, 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 we're doing like new items for the next um, next meeting. Yeah, let um, we need to do community center art. Do we want to move? Uh, and the bears are very timely, and I think we need to have those. Um, um, the potential donation of artwork we could move to the um, uh, the April meeting. Anyone have any questions? I, problems well, with that? you 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 took a motion and a vote to continue right. it to March. I okay. think we need to do it in March. Um, Walter Singer, do we want to move that out? I think the community really wants that taken care of, so okay. the sooner the better. We'll just well, have a long just, meeting. Yeah, let's just plan okay. for a long meeting. One of the things that might be useful for our new staff liaisons is to walk through our work plan as well. Can I um, ask that maybe next meeting we do Rotary and uh, the community art murals first because we're going to have guests coming. Okay. All right. So that we'll have to stick for the whole meeting. Does everyone agree? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is Dancing Man, the, is there a plan now to move it to the community center? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, well then, uh, part of what I would talk about in my uh, report is that it needs to be a little, uh, it le needs some work on it. Okay. Oh, well then you should, the artist is very, I, I just visited that artist at his studio uh, yesterday. And yeah, oh, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I can't hear, I can't hear. Um, David's on mute. Okay. The artist dancing man. Yeah, James Moore. He has a fabulous studio in San Jose. I'm, I'm um, about to do an article on Dancing Man for the Town Crier. So I visited him at his studio. And um, he would love to know, he, he sort of thinks of his sculptures as being fairly impervious to weather and... Um, it's just paint flaking. Okay, so I, I'm sure that he would come and take, well, I'm volunteering him. I, and I shouldn't be doing that, but um, he's a wonderful guy. And I'm sure that if we contacted him, he would probably come out. You know, let's, let's do that um, sooner than later because it would be great when they deinstall Dancing Man. Maybe he could take it back to his studio and do the appropriate work to update it before it's installed at the community center. What do you all I'm not sure he would be willing to take it back to his studio, but I bet he could bring the paint and do it on site. Yeah, it just needs to, well, shall I tell you now? It needs to uh, have the paint uh, stripped and repainted uh, the base. Uh, uh, it needs to be cleaned. It, it could be done in situ. Okay. Okay. Maybe that's a good point because if we're going to move it to the community center, we want it to be in good shape. And if right. the artist yeah, you don't want to move it, it <laughs> looking like it, it really needs. And, and, and you know, yeah, it, it's got to be. If, it, if the artist wants to be paid for uh, doing a little touch up, which is you know fine and good, um, and we have no budget, then we need to you know bring it up to um, city. Uh, uh, to council. John, is there any budget for um, leftover for community center that could cover that since it is something that will is a city asset? I will have to look and see. Look, I don't want to get anybody upset because it's not a big deal. I mean, I literally could do it a uh, half hour or so. It just needs to be stripped, the base. Yes and repainted and the artist would know the right color. I did measure colors by the way, but uh, uh, I, listen, the artist would be the right guy to do it. 
Yeah. Okay. I can reach out to him. Okay. okay. That's appropriate. Okay. And, and, it would be, and it would be good, John, to um, uh, be able to have um, William or um, Jamie report back and let us know if there are any building funds that we could use since that is a city asset. Yeah, we'll look at and, it. And one last thing that um, I had written down in tiny notes. It would be great next week to walk, or next month to walk through where we are with percent funding. Um, to see what's out there. Um, based on an email exchange with John Biggs, I'm hearing that we won't have anything for two years. And it would be great to wrap that into our budget discussion. So we can figure out what we want to do in the next two years and what money is required to do it while we're waiting for percent art to kick in. But it is going to be a couple of years. Is that your sense too, John? My sense is I still have no idea. Okay. It could be a while. Yeah. I'll go from what, with what John Biggs, or is it John Biggs? Yes. What John Biggs said was a couple of years. So it would be great to talk about that. Is there anything, any other, are there any other budget items that anyone would like to add for maybe the, the April budget? Um, I'm thinking we might need stuff for hanging systems in the community center. I don't know if they have any budget for that. What if we have that on the agenda for next meeting, then we can talk about and figure out maybe maybe folks can think about items like that and, and bring them to the next meeting. Okay. okay. All right. So with that, I think we've not only exhausted ourselves, but exhausted all the topics we wanted to talk about. <laughs> yes. uh, does anyone have any final comments before we end tonight? I would just like to say a huge thank you to John for all these eight years of my time on the commission working with you. It's been a, a real pleasure. So thank you very much. We'll miss and, you. Even and though I'm we're going to go home show. to bug you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm almost Please 10 do. years. And um, John, you've been there. You've been a constant presence during that 10 years. So yep. yeah. Thank you all. Yeah, we'll miss you, John. We will. Miss you. Thank you I'll again. be around. Good. <laughs> we so, know where to find you. And, and welcome, <laughs> uh, Jamie and William. Yeah, definitely. So, okay, with that, um, if there are no other questions, comments, needs to know, let's end. Yay. Bye, everyone. Bye.